Hello, YouTube. Uh, this is going to be a fun one. Um, welcome to my bookshelf uh, for a review of a American spirit. Um, I don't do a lot of these, mostly because, I mean, this is a really small channel, and um, there's tons of other reviews of most of the stuff out there. So if I did review them, I mean, it, it would even be a blip in the search results, so there's really no point. Um, this doesn't have a lot of attention yet, though, so I think I can sneak something in and have it actually be useful. Um, so American Spirits. Uh, uh, what what is what are classic American sort of aged spirits about? Um, how do you make sense of them? Well, um, in order to help with that, I thought I would introduce um, an old friend of mine. This is the uh, Thomas A. H. Handy Sazerac from, uh, I think this is the 2010 edition. So the story with this is uh, I did a tasting about a decade ago, which included this, and then I'll, uh, uh, you know, get drunk at the time. Um, this is a good place for it, I think. Um, and it got went into a box uh, for me to finish later. And I kind of lost it. Uh, we recently did some shuffle, reshuffling around the house due to um, remodeling stuff, basically, and I found it again. Um, and uh, so I'm not going to do a full, full review on it because, it's, I mean, it's pointless. Um, you're not going to be able to get this stuff in the most recent version of it. Why? What, what, what's the point? Um, but it does give me a way to sort of set a benchmark for, you know, what American spirits are all about. Um, so, um, two more. Um, so, Loveless. Um, one of the most infamous albums ever made. Um, so, uh, my, my Bloody Valentine made this thing in the early 90s, and it basically ruined them because they could never find a follow-up for it. Um, Loveless as an album is really basically very simple. It's a pop album. You have these very nice, soft, dreamy kind of Beach Boys-esque songs that are sort of the, the core of the thing. They're, they're holding it together. Um, and they're great. They're nice. Um, but then you, they're, they're all sort of dropped into the middle of this whirling storm of guitar noise that just kind of buries them over and um and it's the tension between those two elements the fact that this, this damn thing sounds like it was recorded you know in the eye of a hurricane at the end of the world or something like that um and the fact that you know this just you know assault of of you know guitar feedback and distortion and reverb and god knows what other pedals they had in there um and, you know, it's just very nice pop songs. And somehow the, the tension, the interaction between those two things, like the, 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 the experience of the nice, pretty songs being smeared and covered over makes something new, makes some kind of third element kind of come through. Um, just listen to the first track. You'll, you'll get it. You may not like it, but you'll get it kind of immediately, um, what they're doing, what they're the damn thing. Um, American spirits kind of do the same thing. They're all about new oak. I mean, bourbon, you, it, legally you need new oak, rye, you need new oak, you kind of go down the line. Um, new American oak. You leave something in new American oak for a while, it'll just swamp it pretty darn quick. Like this, this rye here. Um, I mean, I, so I've had a couple, not, not a lot, but a couple of unaged ryes in my life. And you kind of get, it's, it's sort of like, you know, uh, Eastern European black bread, if you ever had that. But like, pour some some nice gin on it. That, that has to be the kind of character of rye. It's nice. And it's just kind of all gone. It's like 90% gone. There's like a little, like, cup crumbs of, of bread left. And... Um, so the, I mean, the main note on this is is just like tons and tons of oak just folded on top of itself. It's you know cinnamon and uh, 
vanillas and a little bit of coconut and char and clove and sawdust, you know, forever. It just, you know, over it's overwhelms your senses. And, and but even though the, the, the actual original rye character is gone, like the fact that it's been kind of smeared over has created, you know, so wine nerds like to talk about um, uh, tertiary uh, characteristics in wine. So the, 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 the primary characteristics are what's from the spirit of the, the, the grape itself, right? Secondary is from the, the wood. The, the, the tertiary ones are the, are the fun ones because those are the ones that come from like the combination of the things and they tend to get way more poetic. So the thing is, on this, uh, on this old rye here, which has been sitting in my, in my boxes for God knows how long, um, if you couldn't go past the, the oak, the sort of the oak assault, you get actually these just gorgeous, I mean, this smells like a forest after, you know, a rainstorm or something like that. Um, you're just getting like wet leaves, wet soil, wet, you know, bark. Um, you know, mushrooms, rocks. I mean, you have to get very poetic to describe something like this. Um, but so it's it's that tension. It's like the the oak has met the rye and just kind of changed it into something else. This is why I bring all of this up um, on the palate. Same kind of thing. Most of the breadiness. It's just gone. It's all it's all oak, but then underneath the oak, you're starting to get the hints. Or you know, the oak hasn't totally taken over, and what's what it has, what's left from the collision, is just you know, you know, just just go go outside um, and on a wet you know day after a thunderstorm, and that's kind of what you're getting. Um, hmm. Or like a like a salad or something like a really like the best salad in the world smeared in oak and rainstorm that's kind of what this is um it's 90 points um i'm not gonna do a full review it's not tiptoeing that far into greatness but it's, it's just starting to cross that line you know um it's good okay so that's there to establish a benchmark um before i get into this uh this little lairds here so this is cruel, right? Because, I mean, this, this, I mean, that the handy is what? 120 bucks now for, in a recent version. And that's, um, that's if you're able to camp outside the, the store the day before and pick it up, um, you know, three times that on the, on the, on the auctions. Um, this is not that no one wants this. So this is retail priced at 50 bucks. And I picked it up on the closeout shelf for 40. What this is, is Laird's Apple Brandy, single cask selections. This is single barrel, uh, 14E01, number six, um, uh, 156 bottles. Uh, this went into bottle on, uh, in November 8, 2018. And it's 54 months old, so four and a half years. Um, uh, bottled at 65.3% alcohol. So this is the good stuff. Um, you'll notice there's not much left because I've been enjoying the hell out of it. Uh, so my point here is to care, compare something that no one cares about um, with something that is hugely in demand and just see, you know, see what's what. Um, Hugely oaky, very American. Um, not, you know, unlike the, the the handy I just I just nosed. So vanilla, um, you know, cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, a little sawdust. Not actually that much sawdust, um, and just tons of black pepper. Um, but then behind that, it's not. You're not exactly getting you know traditional dessert apples. It's more like like baked apple pie. It's not the, the, the primary characteristics are still there much more so than 
than in the, the handy. Um, it's very hot also. It's um, the alcohol is creeping through at 65%. I mean, you know, I'm, I love the, the boozy stuff, but I'm human. Um, kind of in the confectionery note, like, um, almost like if you could make crisp, like oak flavored croissants or something like that. That's a little bit what I'm getting here. Um, like a dusty cellar, maybe, uh, lots of dust, like old wood. And then there's like, um, kind of a, it's a note I've used before, apple cheese. Um, my wife's family introduced this to, to, uh, to me. It's like when you preserve apple by turning into basically like, like a fruit roll up, you sort of dry it out and you turn it into like this block of stuff. It's called apple cheese and it's great. Go try some, um, last for years. On the palette, cool, very hot, sweet to dry. It's not like, you know, oak flavored apple brandy. This is more like, you know, apple flavored oak um, brandy. It's, it's sort of, we're, we're sort of close to crossing that line to where the oak is just completely burying, bury, burying the, um, the spirit. Um, big oak, just an oak, woody, wood spice explosion. You know, again, cinnamon, vanilla, clove, black pepper, you know, fill in all the blanks. Um, but then there's kind of different kinds of appleness, kind of, kind of trying to break through. There's a slightly ooh, astringent sour kind of cider apple thing going on, but it's alongside the sort of dried apple, the apple cheese thing um, that's also happening. Um, so just almost some black, not quite treacle, but more like black, black, black striped um, molasses. Um, just something, some dirt, like just take a bunch of dry dirt, not, not topsoil, not the good, not the fresh stuff, just like dry exhausted dirt and throw, throw it in your mouth and um, enjoy it. And kind of a, like a tea note. Just like winter warmer tea, like you you put all the awesome tea you had in, a, in the pot and let it brew for like 20 minutes. That's kind of what I'm getting here. Just a huge malty black tea explosion. Very drying. Um, okay, I'm gonna give you a little, put a little bit of water in this. Two, actually a lot of water. Four, five, six. That should be close. Oh, no. Still no. Oh. Close enough. Um, it's just, <laughs> there's, this is not subtle. And I kind of love it. Um, Laird's. Um, one of the uh, oldest distillers in the U.S. I believe they might actually be the, the oldest. Uh, they they kind of figured out a while back that they weren't going to be making a lot of their money selling, you know, apple-based spirits. So they've since turned to a, a, jo a side job sort of selling other people's stuff. And usually it's kind of stuff of questionable quality. But, you know, you do what you got to do. Um but uh, their passion seems to be they, they have they make you know apple brandy do not buy their apple jack that is their apple brandy basically cut with vodka or you know some other kind of neutral spirit and uh it's not good i will um i do not recommend it but uh, the apple brandy itself is nice they've started doing a, bond, a bottled and bond version which is also very nice um but this is the one i'm i'm re reviewing um uh, so they're still headquartered in Jersey and Scobieville, but all the, the apples and all, and their actual distillery is in, um, North Garden, Virginia, which is, um, oh geez, where is that? I don't know where in Virginia that is, but somewhere in Virginia, I think it's, I think it's towards Williamsburg, but, but correct me if, on that, if I'm wrong. Um, because of course there's, there's no more apples in Jersey cause it's all, you know, condos and mansions now. Um, Think about this though. I mean, this is an old ass craft distillery, right? American distillery 
selling a four and a half year old spirit um, in, in oak at cast strength, single barrel, 50 bucks, and I was able to get it for 40. I mean, just because, you know, who's who out there is buying, you know, Laird's apple brandy? I mean, this is not a huge in demand kind of product. Um, but it's a very, it is a very American spirit. I mean, I have to tell, like the, the way it arrives, and it's a little bit sweet on the front, and then just dries the hell out with the oak attack. Um, this is, frankly, if you'll forgive me, as American as apple pie, except it's like apple brandy in this case. Um, okay, let's try it again with a little bit of water in it. <laughs> okay, um, so the apple comes out a little bit more, but like the dustiness also comes out a little bit more. Um, not just dustiness, it's like a, yeah, again, kind of like the, like the layers, uh, not, um, the handy, not, not as much. You're getting kind of a, just a, you know, an apple orchard after a rainstorm or something. It's, it smells like, you know, dusty, damp earth and leaves. Um, but, but, but then in the middle of it, there's this sort of very cinnamony apple pie, um, going on. A little candied ginger, candied walnuts, um, a little bit of or like I'm throw throw some orange twist in there, just a little, little little twist of orange. Um, yeah, but I'm still going like you know, cinnamon apple pie in the middle of an orchard after it's you know rained a lot and it's really dusty. Um, somehow combine all those things on the palate. actually much sweeter on the arrival now and more round um, in general. Um, um, but the pepper also comes out a little bit more. It's very, it's very, um, it's very American. Um, just, I think, the, I think the rye guys and girls um, will really, will really get into this. It, it's, it's a very similar profile because this is not a, big fat spirit like like um like bourbon it's not corn based right this is this is more delicate this is more like rye um but it, it's still taking on you know all those oaky notes and just trying to keep its to keep its appley head over um over water um yeah apples you know christmas spice you know Santa's coming down. He's 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 throwing barrels at everyone, um, but you know, all on like a like a pile of you know wet leaves, basically. Um, there's lots going on, it, like little little details you have to pick out from the enormous, obnoxious assault of oak. Um, kind of an oatmeal raisin, um, like a cinnamon oatmeal kind of thing. Um, just how, how can you not like this? I mean, this is, I mean, it, it's, it's not, um, okay. So I'm not going to score it as high as the handy, you know, give it a couple more years though. I mean, I'm going to give this 88. That might be a little, a little generous, but I really like this. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm just drinking it here right now. I mean, this is, Um, how about this? As good an American spirit as you're likely to find under a hundred bucks or so. Terrific. Um, these are out, these things are out there, right? I mean, like, uh, you can't always be chasing what's fashionable. And in 2006, when, when Handy hit, I, I, I guarantee you Rye was not super fashionable at that time. It is now. Um, that's not to say I think uh, bottles like this will ever, you know, come into fashion, but the quality is is right there. I mean, I understand, you know, you know, if you're, so let me say right off, I mean, this or whatever the current version of this is, um, would it be worth 120 bucks 
Yeah, probably. I mean, not not sitting outside the store, not paying three times that that's ridiculous. Um, and you're but you're always going to have that itch, right? That sort of like the the FOMO. The what what is it really like? I want to I want to try it just to see. This gets you pretty pretty darn close. I mean, this is. I mean, it's just it's real American spirit, not not whiskey, but you know this is this is the stuff you're looking for if you want to get that same kind of flavor profile and you know at max you're you're paying 50 bucks for it unless if you if you get lucky and no one else is buying it so um that's all i got i'd love i'd love for people to come back to this in 10 years and say oh you know that guy he spotted the the apple brandy craze before it happened um i don't think i i don't think i'm that prescient um but yeah 88 points um it's excellent. Uh, get it if you can find it. Um, and that's kind of all I got. Thanks for watching and cheers.